I took the Uni Pro camping over the weekend and baked this incredible Detroit style pizza. I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process on how to make this delicious recipe in today's video. When making pizza, the first thing you gotta do is make dough. So combine 210 grams of warm water with seven grams of kosher salt. Give the mixture a quick stir just to make sure the salt is completely dissolved, then add one teaspoon of dry yeast. That's about five grams by weight. Let the yeast bloom, give it a quick stir to make sure it's completely dissolved, then add 300 grams of bread flour to the bowl. Use a plastic bench scraper or some other utensil to mix the ingredients until they start to come together, then switch over to using your hands. Pinch and mix the dough until it seems evenly wet. This should take about four or five minutes. Then cover the dough and let it rest for an additional 20 minutes. Now scrape the dough onto a lightly floured work surface and begin kneading it. The dough is gonna be plenty sticky to begin with, but as you continue to work it, the dough will get easier and easier to handle. Try not to add too much flour during this step or you'll end up altering the hydration content of the dough. After about five minutes of kneading, the dough will be silky smooth in texture. Now it's time to form it into a ball. And one way to do this is to tuck the dough underneath and inside itself until it begins to take shape and the surface of the dough feels tight. Now just pinch off the bottom and you'll have a nice, round, compact dough ball. Lightly grease a large mixing bowl and place the dough inside. Then wrap it up and let the dough bulk ferment at room temp for about four hours or until it's doubled in size. Carefully transfer the dough into a rectangular pan, preferably a 10 by 14 Detroit style pizza pan. Then add a touch of oil so your fingers don't stick and spread the dough out toward the edges of the pan. Getting the dough to stay in the corners can be a bit tricky. Just push it up past the corner and it should fall back into place properly. When you're done, let the dough rest for one hour. Now's a great time for making the pizza sauce. I'm using my simple tomato sauce recipe as a base for it. And to it, I'm adding two teaspoons of dried oregano, a half teaspoon of granulated garlic, and a half teaspoon of red chili flake. Let the sauce simmer for an additional 10 minutes and then reserve it. All right, let's talk cheese. I'm using what's available in my area. I couldn't find Wisconsin brick cheese, which is typical of Detroit pizza. So instead I'm using a 50-50 blend of whole milk mozzarella and Havarti. But before we can go big with the cheese, place a single layer of good quality pepperoni on top of the dough. Once you've done that, smother the pan with one pound of shredded cheese from edge to edge. When the pizza cooks, the cheese around the perimeter will melt into the edges to form a crispy brown crust. This is easily the best part of the pizza. Take the pizza sauce and spread it on top of the cheese in three even rows lengthwise down the pan. You'll end up with some extra sauce, so just save it for another pizza. This is totally optional, but feel free to add another layer of pepperoni to the pizza. When you're done, place the pizza in your uni toward the front half of the oven closest to the door. Cook temps are lower with this pizza. The stone's about 600 degrees Fahrenheit with an ambient temp around 550. Cook the pizza for six to eight minutes, then rotate the pan and repeat. For best results, try to maintain the temps I mentioned earlier. After about 12 to 16 minutes in the uni oven, your pizza should be perfectly cooked and ready to go. Use a flat spatula and pop it out of the pan and onto a cutting board. Now, Detroit pizzas are typically cut into eight pieces, but I had nine hungry campers, so I broke with tradition. This pizza turned out pretty darn good. It could have used a few additional minutes in the oven just to crisp up the bottom a bit more, but I'm not complaining. For me, this was the highlight of the evening. 